Good day, fellow investors, and welcome to the Sunday Stock Analysis. Today, we're going to an analyze new world brands, and I'm going to discuss three key concepts when to understand when investing. That is goodwill, an acquisition strategy, and a turnaround investing strategy. Buffett never likes turnarounds, so it's important to see, okay, what's going on, what happened to new world, and why it is such an interesting story. But we, if you don't like the company, we can still learn so much about investing here. Let's start. So for those who are not familiar with Newell, it has a lot of brands and probably we use something from Newell at least once a week, if not even once a day. Very American company, so if you are not from America, you might not know some of the brands. When such a company with so many strong brands gets into trouble, one must always look at whether it's an opportunity or a trap. The price to book ratio is 0.91. However, there is goodwill that I'll discuss later. The price to earnings ratio is 5.64. Don't get confused because it's distorted by income tax provisions due to the change in the income tax. However, the forward price to earnings ratio is still low, just at 10.78, which is a real bargain when compared to other stocks. However, let's look at the risk reward and let's see first what happened to Newell. So if we look back at the stock price, the stock price was above 50, not even a year ago. But if we take a longer term perspective, the stock was even at five in 2009 and 11 in 2011. So there is a lot of volatility and you can always see something like this go back to the previous values because you have to see, okay, what pushed the stock higher and what is Wall Street focusing on. Up till 2016, the company was doing good, but as Wall Street always expects higher earnings, growth, 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 the management sometimes does really stupid things, things that they don't understand. They think it's smart because an investment banker will convince them that any acquisition is so smart because he gets the fee, but then the management gets convinced, the investors get convinced because even investors are greedy about growth and then they do some things that they don't understand very risky like acquiring Jardin for 13 billion. Jardin is a company that owns various brands of which one is Coleman Outdoor Greer. When such an acquisition is made the management counts on synergy and savings. The goal was to unlock 500 million in cost efficiencies and savings, expand the company's global reach and be immediately accretive to earnings. Not everything worked out as the company planned. And that's usually the case, especially in such stretched acquisitions when a company that's not that big doesn't really know how to take over, how to merge into another company, different cultures, different it's 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 an art to merge something. So it's again risky, but investors get very, very enthusiastic about those synergies and combinations. When a company buys another company, you have to be enthusiastic because if they buy it on the cheap, not about the synergies, just look at the synergies as a bonus that might happen, but very often doesn't happen, which makes a risky play to invest into a merger and acquisition. Nevertheless, the message here is to really differentiate between companies that have there there are a lot of them that have been growing at any cost through acquisition mergers and piling on debt to do that so you have to really be careful about those companies because when things start to unravel when interest rates go up when the synergies don't come from the acquisitions then those stocks are the in the biggest trouble and there is a big difference between a stock that grows on acquisitions and the stock that grows on organic high return on investment capital growth. That's the one you want to hold for the long term. Nevertheless, let's go back to Newell and its price to book value of 0.91, which many see it as a bargain. However, Newell's tangible book value would be only $2 per share and the price to tangible book value will be 13. Because when a company acquires other companies, it usually pays a premium as nobody would want to sell something at a fair price. The difference between what a company pays and the book value of the assets it is called goodwill and it's recorded on the balance sheet of the acquirer. However, in the case of Newell, when the acquisitions don't work as planned, one must impair that estimated goodwill, which is exactly the place where Newell is now, as it plans to sell brands of about 10 billion and we'll see how much impairment will there be on the 13 billion that is goodwill on the balance sheet. Now, when things go well, Newell hopes to use the proceeds of the sales for buybacks at these low prices and about 45% for debt repayment. If all goes as planned, 
EPS for 2018 should be between 265 and 285, which gives, gives a forward price earnings of around 10, but the company should spend 5.5 billion in buybacks over the next few years, which is a huge amount, more than 40% of market cap, and that should give some protection to the stock price, which is something very interesting. However, the company plans a lot of divestitures and Newell will be a much smaller company as revenues will be down 40% and operating in income will be down 50%. So they are selling what doesn't fit, but they are selling profitable companies from what I see here. With operating income down 50%, we can expect profits to be around $1 per share. However, 10 billion coming in from the divestitures should give $25 per share to distribute between debt and buybacks. At current prices, repurchases would remove 42% of outstanding shares, bringing down the number of shares outstanding for four, from 488 million to 284 million and improving significantly EPS, pushing it close to two. Further, 4.5 billion should have long-term debt and lower interest payments additionally increase earnings. If the management succeeds in the plan, the company is now a bargain. Further, there is Car Icon stepping in. He has now four members of the board. He's famous for regarding most American corporate management as idiotic and he sees as them as the biggest problem to US growth. He bought a stake in the company and we'll see how that will work out. However, you must understand Icon and his investment style. He will invest in such workout situations and then he's happy if five or seven of the works out work out well. In the long term, he knows that he will probably break out even or at some loss from some stocks, but he will do very well on the other companies that he manages to turn around and improve. So with Newell, you have also to understand that there is a risk, nothing is a guarantee, but there is also upside, especially upside when Carl Icahn is in the game and he will try to revert, reformulate this divested, divest partly of the company and increase the stock price to sell it to somebody else to get his return probably. I will just finish on the cash flow. The trailing free cash flow of the company is around 400 million where the company pays a dividend of 0.92 per share or 448 million, which means more debt is needed to sustain the business. However, that might change in the future. So to conclude, Newell has had its share of problems. When such a company has problems, you never know if that will continue. So you must expect, okay, what's the worst that can happen? The buybacks are there and they say they will do it. So when somebody announced something like that, you might want to take advantage of it. Like when the Fed said, we're buying securities, look at what happened to the S&P 500. If they now spend 30% of market cap, 40% on buybacks, well, that should uh, at least save the stock from bleeding. So that's very interesting. Try to time it if you are into such let's say swing trades with icon or without icon thank you for watching looking forward to your comments about this risk reward estimation and what can happen what do you think what are the probabilities of newell managing the turnaround doing the buybacks increasing the stock price and the probabilities of the trouble continuing a lot of impairments uh, lower sales lower growth etc etc so See you in the next video and check in the link below more of my research if you're interested and if you like the risk reward approach to investing.